Good morning. Rick Thomas with Yachting International Radio's Yachting USA podcast. I have the privilege to be with my friend Tom Convoy of Houston Yachts. Today we're going to talk about his long history in the yachting industry and we're going to explore the world of Houston Yachts, get a better understanding of what they're doing, how they're doing, why they're doing. Tom, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having. Thanks for stopping by the Houston office. It's a pleasure. Yep. It's a pleasure. It's uh, it's nice to be here. You and I go back a ways, and this is the fun part I'm having with this podcast because we are about the business of yachting, and you and I have both been in it a long time. You a little bit longer than I. You started in the mid '70s, and I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop here because it's fun. What's in common with one of my rock and roll icon legends, Neil Young and Tom Conboy? Yeah, I was spent. I spent a few years, about three years, on the on the WN Raglan, which was a hundred and one foot Baltic trader. Yeah, and the boat actually was bought down in Beckway, redone here in seventy six to seventy eight. I joined the boat in seventy nine through eighty one, and we joined it in California. Did the whole West Coast, and then it started on a trip around the world and got as far as New Zealand, and then came back with. So there was some family issues, but it's quite a cool, it's pretty cool program. There was only about I think six or seven of us in the whole time which were crew on the boat wow wow so, so that's a pretty tight group yeah one one probably notable name the guy that really was spearheading the whole thing was this guy roger katz roger katz and his brother bruce katz built the juliet oh yeah okay and, with he, I, I hoistman yeah and so but yeah it was a fun time and yeah sex stories and rock and roll yeah yeah it was, it was one of the better times not a lot of responsibility yeah. a lot of fun i bet there you go well it's a great way to start your yachting yeah. career in a way isn't yeah. it it was all uphill from there. So you're a yacht builder by nature. You, you sell boats, but I've known you almost my entire career involved in either owning shipyards or working in shipyards, building boats. When I think about some of the first projects I get involved in, there was Windship and then Trident. And I think there's a combination of those yards. Can you walk me through that a little bit? Because I know you were involved in that. Well, there was a company called Kiwi Boats that had headquartered in the UK, down in South America, and also Clearwater, Florida. And Kiwi Boats was the predominant racing sailboat builder. Right. And the guys that made up that builder were Gary Carlin and Ron Holland when, his seat, when he started, and Jim Barillas and Bill Tripp, and some of the well-noted racing sailboats. Imp was probably one of the most famous sailboats ever built by them. But, and then they merged with a company called Windship. Right. Which was Bill Waite and Ann Morrow. That would have been probably in around the late 80s or very, yeah, probably late 80s, I guess would have been. And Steve Nichols and myself formed a company called Trident. And right. we were actually building uh, boats up at Directors in Mamaroneck, New York. And, and the business opportunity took us to a merger with Windship and Kiwi. And the company became Windship Trident, located in Tampa, Florida, right on the Gandhi. Uh, Right across Rattlesnake the, Point. Right, Rattlesnake Point. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, now, I found it interesting because I grew up in that area. I yeah. think you know that. And it seemed for some reason the Tampa Bay area was a hotbed for sailing yacht construction. You had Charlie Morgan, you had Ted Irwin, you had uh, Dick Lazara. Dick Lazara and, yeah. and, and Vince and, and the Gulf Vince, Star, yeah, Sailmasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Profound how you have that talent. All in a that lot of boat spot. building, a lot of units, a lot of boat building. Gulf Star itself, Morgan, there was probably more units being built in that part of Florida and Central Florida than were anywhere else in the world at the time. I, I would agree with that. Fiberglass boat building, as we know it, was really started by Vince Lazara and they brought a boat across to where they were building like like more of mobile homes and things in california they decided to build a boat and they trained it across the country to the new york boat show which was the predominant boat show and this would have been in the 60s the way they demonstrated this new medium was they had a 38 revolver because it was <laughs> thick solid fiberglass and they would shoot the gun into the side of the boat to demonstrate to the people how durable this material I love it. was. I love it. That, so that Vince, was... Vince Lazare is really the godfather, grandfather, the founder of, as we know, yacht construction with GRP, FRP, or composite. Right, right. I remember when I think it was Vince or Dick brought in the autoclave over there, yeah. and, and that yeah. was a big deal. Yeah. And then when I was working with uh, Trident, you guys were building some composite vessels. I remember working with Gary a little bit. And it's the co yeah, composite Gary, construction I think, I, was I, big. I think Gary and, and obviously Jim Burroughs was right there with him too. And some of the most high tech at the time composites. We were building right. hulls upside down. We were incorporating the longitudinals in it. We were building some boats with Bill Tripp with the Cinderella, Ron Holland with Chardonnay Sea. We were also doing some power boats with Tom Fexes. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's like a 72 footer, a 96 footer. And uh, then we did some stuff with Ted Hood and Ted Fontaine. Wow. Um, so some of the some of those boats. So there was quite a bit of uh, crossover and a lot of talent pool when you look back at the names. No, no trip. kidding. Andrew Winch was there. Ron Holland was there. Carlin. Yeah. Burles, Faulkner. And yeah. I, guess. You go. <laughs> I, was young, I was a young guy then. Well, we all were. I didn't know what I didn't know then. You, you're touching on something that tends to be the theme of my podcast and something that I, I find very important in this stage of my career, and that is understanding our industry, what we once had, and where we are now. You just described a whole lot of boat building. Yeah. And a whole lot of boat builders in that one spot. And then if you look around our country, you could have gone out in the Pacific Northwest and you saw the same thing. A, 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 a large group of yacht builders collaborating, being successful, building predominantly fiberglass boats. I counted over 45 builders back in 1988, 1890, building, 1990, building crew serve boats, 80 feet and larger. And a lot of them over 100 foot. What, four left now today? Yeah, it's tab. Yeah, well, I want to touch on that later because you guys at Hasten are, are killing it. You're doing a great job, and you're you're, you're staying busy. And um, uh, I don't make I'm not making a comparison, but it, it reminds me a little bit of the. Well, I, I think there is a comparison. I think it's, it's actually easier than most people think. I mean, there was no boat building left in the United States because the boats got much larger. Building a boat is you know is pretty difficult task. Yeah, you can make money in the boat business doing anything but building boats <laughs> and do quite well at it. But yeah, they were building repetition. Right. And and a lot of a lot of the reasons that boat building has not and companies go out of business because they're building very complex and one offs and things of that nature. Custom yacht building is very difficult to make money. There's on. no margin in it. The reason he's been successful is we're, we have a speculation business, so we build. We have five or six or now seven different models that we start. They're engineered, right? And we chart, we change the, all the interiors are dramatically different and personalized. But the boat is engineered, and it's we're building the same boat again, right? And that's probably a big reason for our success. The other reason is that Holland, in general, is a cottage industry. Everybody's a boat builder. It's the yeah, size of New Jersey. You know, it's it's a really People, the people there, it's the, these jobs in these shipyards are really well respected and, and really sought after. Where I think, unfortunately, with our phones and computers and our youth today, is it's it's not considered to be uh, cool enough, or it's not maybe even looked up, down upon to be a uh, in a boatyard building boats. Well, I'm going to take a, a different tack to that and say I think we've done a horrible job of educating our young people about what that career could even be. We've lost that. We they don't know. I just yeah. they've not been exposed to it. Not like you and I were exposed yeah. to it. We grew up around it. Um, we don't know how to change a tire or change oil on a car either. So I mean, yeah, you know, it's, see. it's, it's not pretty low <laughs> bar. Certain like things we take for granted yeah. are just not common knowledge yeah. or, or experience anymore. Cool, because yeah, you know, that's where I, we're, we're going to talk about Heeson and and these the boats you're building. I, I see a lot of 50, 55, 67 meter boats. You're even building in the 80, 82, 83 meter boats, right? Yeah, with largest we launched a boat last year, which Project's Cosmos, which is now called Genesis, is was an 80 meter, 1800 GT is the largest boat that we've built at Heeson since its inception or founded in 1978. Okay, I'm going to take you back a little bit. When I first learned of Heeson, and I had the first opportunity to meet Franz, he, at the same time I was meeting with Frank Mueller. Oh yeah, and a mutual friend of ours, John Stalupi. Yeah, and I came in right after John commissioned and had Octopussy built and had set the record. And that wager that was made was pretty freaking cool. When yeah, you think well, about the risk taken in custom built building. Franz put the put the yard up, basically. Cause didn't it, he? Well, it wasn't really a wager. It was like if, if the, the, the boat didn't meet the speed, the shipyard had to take the boat back. If the shipyard had to take the boat back, it would have bankrupted the shipyard. Right, right. And yeah, not, only made the, it not, not only made the speed, it, it did it, I think it was 53.7, and the uh, it had to do 51, so it actually exceeded it. Yeah. Fastest yacht in the world. I know. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's And it's a shame that boat has, has suffered such a challenge since then with all the other well, stuff. Well, I mean, it is. Listen, we would take about a boat that's built 1989-90, right? Uh, yeah. That's 31-year-old uh, boats, or boats get old. They get tired. There's not a, and they last a long time, and. You still, we have sailboats that were built in the 20s and and they're still being rehabbed and redone. But I've loved of that particular design. And the octopus seat was that it was, it's been maintained, it's had several owners, it's been refitted. But there becomes a point in time where 
it just has a life cycle, and that life cycle is at its end. And there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I brought up Franz. He's, yeah. he, I, I thought he was quite a gentleman the few times I've met with him in person, and he showed me around the shipyard many years yeah. ago. Of course, the baton's been tri- carried forward, and, and there's a new group there running the boat, and he's, I understand, enjoying his own boat now in, in, in his retirement. What's changed um, in the shipyard between the years when Franz was at the helm and, and what we're doing today? Different culture, same culture? Well, it's changed from the set. It's just gotten bigger. It's more corporate size of projects. It's just, it's it's a little bit more, it's a big time operation now. Yeah. You know, we've got 600 direct employees and there are 500 subs and people that we have a mill shop out of the German border with 150 people on it. We've got 14 yachts at all times, 12 to 14 under construction. That's fantastic. You know, we, our smallest is 50 meter now where our smallest used to be like 100 feet. And we were more of 100 feet to 150 feet. And now we're 165 feet to 280 feet. Right, so, right. And Complete. the primary where we're at is probably just 50 to 60. So it's like 165 to 200. That's that's a big transition. Yeah. That's a big transition. Technology. I was actually doing a little bit of research and I on your big boat, the, the project you're calling was Cosmos, but it's now what? what? The name is Genesis. It's Genesis. been delivered. It's down in the Middle East. Yeah, okay. So so I was looking at this backbone structure that was being yeah. designed into it, and that sounded interesting. Is that also the same vessel that has the sensors built into it, the stress sensors to understand what's happening to the structure while you're There is away? that. And obviously, when you start building an aluminum boat of this size, it becomes noodle-ish. And yeah. so it like a very large I-beam, not for a better word, down the center of the boat and everything is framed off of that. Yep. It has a lot of horsepower and it has four 20 Vs, which are 5,500 horsepower per engine. So you got 22,000 horsepower. Going to two gearboxes, I read. To two gearboxes with variable pitch wheels. And so wow. it has, it, it can achieve speeds of 30 knots, which is pretty remarkable of a boat of that size. Actually, I believe it's the fastest boat with conventional diesels and then no turbines <clears throat> ever built in aluminum. At 83 meters. 80. 80 meters. 80 and 1,800 or 1,700 GT. Wow. Yeah. Big boat. That's a big boat. Yeah. That's a lot of volume. That's a lot of displacement. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I understand that you have a gentleman, a guest that showed up that we'd like to invite into the conversation. Oh, Um, yeah. Niels is here, the new CEO. Yeah, there is. uh, Your timing is good. So our our new CEO, which is (laughs) Niels Vlasen. Niels is taking the helm at a young age of 44. He's uh, also been uh, at the yard for now since 2012 as the CFO. Yeah. And nice. I think he's bringing a new, it's a new chapter, and I think we're all really excited about it. So, I, yeah. I tell you what, I would be excited too. Yeah. This is the evolution of our businesses. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, let me we invite let me, Niels over. We'll have a conversation with him as well. We're going to take a break here real quick. Rick Thomas with Yachting USA. And we'll be back with, it's Niels Vassen. Lesson. Lesson. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. You can-